Well, um, I'm making this video especially for my exhibition uh, in Toronto. Well, the, the present show uh, at the Carrier Gallery is a show that is uh, dedicated to explicit subjects that stem from my personal experience of the Holocaust, of having survived the Holocaust. It is not an exhibition of Holocaust art. Um, I always have a difficulty when I hear this word, Holocaust art, because Holocaust art does not exist. There is good art, there is mediocre art, there is also bad art, and uh, the Holocaust experience nourishes some kind of art, and it is very important that it touches upon things which go beyond that very specific experience of which photographs and human documents are of a such big power that painted art cannot compete. But um, let me say that um, I was a very, very lucky boy who has survived the Holocaust. And I was also a very talented boy who already at a very young age was able to produce art that people considered art. At the door of my studio hangs a watercolor. It is hanging there since I moved into this house as a guardian of the door of my, of my studio, which I have discovered on a monitor of the Washington Holocaust Memorial Museum in which they show me at the age of 12 or 13 painting that very painting. In uh, that one, I look very serious and I'm very concentrated on, um, on, on the brush in my hand. But um, in another, in another uh, painting, uh, sorry, in another photograph of that time, I'm looking into the camera, and there you can see that I'm a happy boy, that I'm maybe also interested in other things besides the one that is hanging uh, there behind me. And I must say that already, at the age of 13, 14, I was quite an accomplished, professionally accomplished artist. Uh, I have sent to the gallery uh, a um, watercolor of a still life, which shows a certain maturity, which surprises even me. In the same show is included a watercolor that is a portrait of a Hasidic boy. I remember in 46 arrived from Russia a family of Jews who have barely survived, but they were very, very religious people. And within a few weeks, they were suddenly dressed in a special way and they did not resemble anymore the other people of the camp. And they looked to me very, bizarre. And I asked the boy to come if he would like to sit in, f in my room and I will make a, 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 a portrait of him. And he wasn't even sure that um, it was kosher to have one's image reproduced by somebody. He said he would like to ask his father. I said, you don't have to ask his father because you better come here and I won't tell anyone that I have painted you. Well, that painting is part of the few works of my, um, of, uh, of, of, uh, my period in Landsberg. There is also an old Jew sitting and uh, learning a page of uh, the Bible or a Midrash. And this was not something that I saw around me. This was something that I picked up from reading books, of Jewish literature and so on. 
Reading for me was much more reading a newspaper, reading a review. And there is a man reading, for instance, a man holding a newspaper and reading. Maybe he's a little worried about what he is reading. I don't know. I did this uh, watercolor because I thought it is very interesting to separate the outline from a stain of color. I had no idea that there was somebody like Dufy who was doing it in French art already uh, <laughs> many, many years before me. But it was really quite surprising to do that. At the same time, I was also becoming obsessed by memories of the dangers and the horrors that I have lived. And I have painted a woman holding a child in her, in her arms and the background is, is, is in terrible turmoil. It's a, it's, it's a wild, wild tempest or two heads of uh, refugees that I created with such energetic strokes that even till now they surprise me. And when I look at my works that I have done in the 50s of abstract work, I find the same hand of the energetic stroke that I had already then at age 14. But let me come now to another subject, which is in the show. As you will see, there, is, there are in the show two groups of um, the paintings. There is a group of angels that are mostly related to the German painter of the 16th century, Albrecht Dürer. And there is a group of um, paintings um, that is based on the very famous image of the Warsaw boy, the photograph of the Warsaw boy with his arms upraised. It is the most known icon of um, the Holocaust, and it has been published in thousands of reviews and books. But let me, let me return now to Dürer. When I arrived after the war to Bavaria, to Landsberg, I um, found that in this small German town, there was a shop with some old books. And in that shop, I found a book of drawings of the German artist Dürer. And I had some pocket money, I bought this book. And I looked at the drawings and I opened the page and lo and behold, there was a page all of pillows. Six images of simple pillows somehow crushed in this way or another way. And uh, I had a personal, personal memory of the pillow that my mother handed me over at the very moment that the Lithuanian police came to fetch us in 1940 from our house and throw us into the ghetto. And I left the house holding this pillow like that. And, and it was raining, cats and dogs. And, and I was soaked and the pillow became soaked. And I threw away the pillow. I threw the pillow into the street. I saw after that people walking over that. And it remained with me as, 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 as a symbol of something that you just give away, that you lose. It is your home, it is your comfort, it is, it is the domestic scene. It is what you had under your head when you were sleeping, when you were dreaming. It goes from you. And suddenly in this Bavarian city, Landsberg, Landsberg, which is famous because there is a prison in Landsberg where Hitler was imprisoned before he came to power and where he wrote his infamous book, uh, Mein Kampf. In that town, I found these pillows drawn by Dürer. 
And then another drawing of a pillow and Durer's self-portrait, age 16. And somehow I became obsessed with, with, with Durer. And then I went to Munich, which was not far away. And in the museum there, in 46, 47, I discovered many more paintings of Durer. I have also painted this discarded pillow of mine, which um, is part of the history. And when with years I became more known in my art, and I had an exhibition in Nuremberg, in the city in which there is the house of Nuremberg, I had there a couple of exhibitions, one in the National Germanic Museum, and one in the Dürer house, the house that belonged to Dürer. On that occasion, and this was many years later, this must have been in 79 or so, I was given a print of Dürer's Melancholia. Uh, the print, so they told me, was made uh, then, recently, but using the original plate of Dürer's um, of Dürer's production. Um, I have it hanging in my study, not in my studio, where I'm speaking now. And I must say that some of my paintings based on that specific print um, have ended up being part now of the collection of the Dürer House in Nuremberg. One of them is a big melancholia with a still life in front of her. The still life being, for me, some kind of offering, of offering something <laughs> to, to Dürer, who has inspired so much of my work. But um, whenever I went into exploration of that print, which in itself is, a, is, is an incredibly strange and uh, engaging image because it, it, it describes a, a winged figure that is sitting in a space packed with symbols, geometry, and 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 and, uh, and nature, um, rationalism and irrationalism. Um, it is somewhere suspended between um, the Middle Age and the Age of Enlightenment. In my paintings, I try to bring that winged figure back to our world of today, the world that knows the the shattered experience of the Jews. And I have sometimes placed that angel in a landscape which looks like a landscape that is there when the waters of the general, of the universal flood have receded. And it is in a kind of a makeshift little tent protecting itself from somewhere, that winged figure. Because the winged figure is, 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 is not the angel that one sometimes associates with uh, messengers of uh, the heavens that come down, that sometimes invisible, are guarding people, and so on. It is true, they are messengers, but in Hebrew, um, they are not necessarily messengers that come directly from God to man. They can be messengers from, from other venues. And sometimes these are maybe messengers that we invent for ourselves. Maybe sometimes we are the guardians of, the, of those angels because we need them, because they, they, they somehow are a bridge between ourselves and some beliefs that we prefer 
to have. Sometimes these messengers that come from elsewhere are imprisoned in their flight gear. They are blind and dumb, and it is for us to find out what is it that they bring us. Sometimes these messengers are made of bits and pieces that float around. And, uh, and you will see in this exhibition, all the things that I have mentioned uh, are, uh, are there. And uh, in one of my paintings, somehow, suddenly, this brooding angel, uh, this sad angel, sits next to a wall on which some artifacts and pieces of paper um, represent the boy from Warsaw, the boy with the arms up. Now, I must say that this boy has been a subject, this photograph has been a subject of many publications and many books. Uh, it is part of some 40 or so photographs that were done by the Germans who have destroyed, finally destroyed completely the ghetto of Warsaw and um, killed all its inhabitants. And these photographs were done in order to be sent to Hitler as a proof. Here is the good job that we have done. Here is how we have eliminated the Jews. I, I have a book. Uh, let me show it to you. Yeah, this is one of the books, one of the books on the child on, of, about um, whom I was speaking. And in that book, which is the child appearing in, um, in uh, films and so on, there are many pages dedicated to, to images of, uh, of this um, subject. So this is, if I'm showing it, it is just to say that I have been dealing with this subject for many years in waves of producing paintings. To me, this boy is, um, is an image of the Jewish crucifixion. Uh, and it, is be it goes beyond the Jewish crucifixion. It is a child that becomes a victim of an unbearable situation. And this boy, on one hand, reminds me very much the way I was when I was in, in the ghetto of Vilna. I had the same age, I had the same little coat. I had always bare legs with uh, one of the socks that was sliding down. And, uh, and I very much identify with this boy. And I very much identify in this boy my, my very best friend, my childhood friend, who had my name. He was called Samuel or Samek, the way I was called Samek. And this boy, did not survive. Unfortunately, he was found by some Germans and uh, the SS um, shot him and left him in his blood to, to serve as a warning. Um, so this boy represents that, but, but this boy represents for me the children of everywhere that are victims of war and battles and conflicts. Uh, the children of Rwanda, the children of Iraq, the children of Syria of today, not only the Jewish children, although I know very well there was a million and a half of Jewish children that were slaughtered. A million and a half of Jewish children. And I was one who survived. So it is quite obvious that somewhere, whenever I paint yet another little boy painting, I, I pay a tribute to this idea that children should not be sacrificed. And 
when we speak of, of, of the sacrifice of children, there is, there is a painting which is of the little boy in a boat that is not very steady. He holds on to two kind of poles or branches with his real hands. The hands of uh, giving up are different. They are made of paper. But his real hands cling to those two branches that hold above him a promise of some kind. The promise which is uh, like a sail, but is also a rainbow with the signs of color on it. A promise that no more will be there a sacrifice of this kind. And again, the boy appears and reappears once as the victim of destruction, in another moment as the little David, as a stone, as a tombstone of the little David who is there, who is there to kill Goliath. And on that painting there is even the name David in Hebrew letters scratched into the stone. And then of course there is, um, there is uh, the absence of this boy with a huge pile of shoes that reminds us again and again and again that this symbol should never be forgotten and has to be forever present in our memory. Then there is another painting which um, is included in this show, about which I'm going to speak a little more at length. It is not part of these two subjects, but it gives an idea of my exploration of the Jewish themes in my art. The painting is called Pardes. Now, what is Pardes? Pardes in Hebrew means um, a garden, a grove, uh, usually an area which is um, very well delineated by a wall. Pardes is also the root of the concept paradise. But in Hebrew, pardes has also another meaning. Pardes is written in four letters, the pei for p, the reish for r, the d, and the s, the pei, reish, dalet, samach. These four letters symbolize the way in which we can try to understand the Bible. The Bible is a very complex, very, very complex text. Um, it spans over several hundreds of years of oral tradition. And then it was written down in letters by Ezra and Nehemiah, and, um, and since then transcribed and, 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 and copied, and after that translated into Greek, and from then later on, I think, into Latin, and much, much later into English, and, and, and all the other languages. But it is a highly metaphorical text, a highly symbolical text, a highly secretive text, beyond the stories which are very simple to the eye. There are many secrets. Now the letter P, the P, stands for Pshat, which means the simple way of understanding the Bible. And in this painting, which looks like an area 
that is delineated by forms that make you think of the tablets of the law, which would symbolize, in the case of this painting, the Bible. At the right-hand corner of